Hello, hello, hello. Hi. Come on in the room. Come on in the room. We have a late night kickback, huh? Come on in the room. <laughs> Come on in the room. Come on in the room. Yay. <laughs> I, can like, make a, I can make a song out of anything, huh? Yeah. I can make a song out of anything. I can make a song out of there anything. There she go. <laughs> Can make a song out of anything. <laughs> yes. Hello, best friend. Hey. Shout out to Lottie Dottie and each and everybody. Look at me. I'm about to bring it on down a little bit. All right. Shout out to Lottie Dottie and each and everybody. For those of you guys who have never been with us before, maybe it's been a while. I am Candy Sincerity Johnson. And I am Sean Johnson. And together, we're a beautiful couple. Aww. Outside of that, we do a whole <laughs> lot of things. We do a whole lot of things. We do a lot of things in life. We do, we do a lot of things in business. And one of the things that we do is we help you transform your income and 5X that thing over a 12-month period. How do we do that, you may ask? Good question. <laughs> We do that in one of two ways. Either we help you grow and multiply what you currently have, or if you're looking for another stream of revenue, we help you start an online business from home, just mm -hmm. like us. Yes. Yes. So shout out to all of the best friends. This video is dedicated to our best friends, our subscriber best friends, yes. and all of our replay best friends. Mm -hmm. We love each and every one of you guys. And we're glad to have you. Yes. Miss Tammy said that she was new here. So welcome, yes. welcome, welcome, Miss Tammy. Welcome to anybody else that may be new or may have just uh, started following in the last week or so or mm -hmm. whatever. Welcome. We're so glad that you are here. Yes, yes, we yes. Glad to see you back in. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you so much for the hearts. Thank you for the uh, all of the all of the positive energy that y'all give us. Y'all have no idea when we hit that button and we see that that baby that kickstarts this thing in a yes. whole nother direction. You understand what I'm saying? Absolutely, it does. Yes, yes, yes. So listen, what did you title this video? Well, I titled it "Candy and Sean Exposed." Candy and Sean exposed. Because let me tell you something. Can't nobody tell your story like you can tell your story. Right? That part. Right? That part. So Because if somebody else tried to tell it, they're going to be missing key details and mm -hmm. probably tell it incorrectly anyway. Exactly. So the reason why we did this video, the reason why we called this video Candy and Sean exposed is because we've been giving our commentary a lot on very popular and trendy topics. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Everybody have been saying, man, I love what you said about this. And I started following you and I connected with what you said about that. But wait, 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 wait. Y'all getting everybody else together. Right. But we really want to know what's behind the curtain with you. Mm -hmm. Because usually when people give me too much for somebody else, it's something that might fall out the bag with them. Okay. Right. right. And so we decided, hey, let's just put all of our cards on the table. Let's come. Let's have a conversation. Who are y'all? What's your story? Mm -hmm. Give me, don't just give me the highlights and the cliff notes. Don't give me the Instagram version. Give me the behind the scenes. The nitty gritty. So. But it's funny because because there were some people that was like, well, I it'd be interesting if your skeletons fall out the closet or you yeah. all have to be other, everybody else's business. Why don't you yep. tell your own business and all that? And that's how I can tell when that's somebody that's new yep. to us. Because anybody that has been rocking with us since we came on these social media streets back in 2017, I believe it was, mm -hmm. would have known that all of our business is already in the street. Girl, <laughs> all. Girl, look, all you got to do is ask. All you got to do is ask. All you got to do is ask. Like, we used to talk about our business, share our business, wrote a book about our business. Like, our business is out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, it's funny because I can always tell when it's somebody that that's newer to us. And I'm fine with that. Mm -hmm. However, trust and believe. Like, that's what our that's what our social media was initially. When we initially came out, it was all pretty much lifestyle content. I mean, we went from showing our us rekindling our relationship, building our relationship, to being divorced, to trying to work it back out again, to, I mean, just... It's there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we came we came to tell you our story, the ups, the downs, everything in between. As we go through our story, if you guys have any questions, we're going to open it up for questions yes. too. Now listen, to make the video fun, to make the video interesting, I'm going to say this. I'm going to put us on the spot. Uh-oh. 
We will answer every question. Oh, you know how, no, okay. look, you know how people okay. do. You know how people do. They be acting like, girl, it was 50 questions in the comments, girl. And they pick and choose and they scroll and they be like, no, nah, I'm not going to go there. I'm not going to answer that. We're going to answer your questions, yes. even if it's uncomfortable. Yes. Because how can people say they're building something on transparency and they're not willing to be completely transparent? They're not willing to be. You can't be yeah. partially transparent. You got to either be all in or all out. Okay. Right. right. All right. So who are we? So I am Sean Johnson. Mm -hmm. I am from Chicago. I'm from the south side of Chicago. Grabby Chi Town. Okay, to the world. Yes. Um, and I. I'm just a regular old chick. Like, what you see is what you get. Like, there's nothing else behind it. Um, I grew up on the south side of Chicago, went to school in central Illinois, met this woman here, and we've been together since shortly after college when both of our relationships went, you know, its own separate way. We were friends for a while, and then, you know, that's what it is. So, mm -hmm. it's really not a whole lot to me, honestly. Like, thank you for the stars, Miss Gail. Thank, thank you, you very stars. much for the stars. So you yeah. said shot to you. Yes. Girl, you better know it. Percolator. So, so if I told y'all, y'all wouldn't know. I'm from a little town in Illinois called Joliet. Mm -hmm. A lot of people who from Illinois, no matter what part you're from, everybody try to claim Chicago, but that's not real. You see what I'm saying? If you remember the rapper DeBrat, she's from Joliet. She's not from Chicago. If you guys remember Lionel Richie, he's not from Chicago. He's from Joliet. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm from a small town. I'm not going to claim Chicago because I'm not Chicago. I'm Joliet. You see what I'm saying? I'm 45 minutes south of Chicago. Mm -hmm. And so, um, I, you know, I'm just a regular girl. You know, I grew up um, single mom. My mom worked, you know, between one and two jobs to support myself and my little brother. Um, my father was not really in my life. Um, he was in and out of prison a lot. And so we really don't have, you know, the best relationship. Uh, we're in the process of trying to see if we could develop a relationship. Uh, I would probably say I look a lot like him, is what everybody says. Um, I have a lot of brothers on my dad's side because my dad had six, seven kids. What? Six, seven. Something like that. Six, yeah. seven. It's six or seven of us. Something <laughs> like that. Anyway, um, so that's really my story. You know what I mean? My dad lives in Tennessee. I have a lot of family in Tennessee on his side. Um, and I'm just, I'm just literally just, I'm, I'm just, I don't know. What you see is what yeah. you get. <laughs> So the two of us, the two of us met in college. Uh, we met in undergrad. We went to Illinois State University. Mm -hmm. And um, this beautiful woman was a member of Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated. And so <laughs> she seen me in the library one day. Uh huh. And I was in there doing what real players do. You see what I'm saying? You know. And so she sent one of her sorority sisters over sure to uh, try to invite me to a party because I was shy. I didn't know how to yeah. approach a female because I was I wouldn't mm -hmm. say new, new to um, to dating women, but I was kind of newer and I, I never really had approached. And I was like, I just didn't know, yeah. but I knew. Girl, she knew. Girl, I knew. how old is she? She was that way. Girl, who's... I knew because I had that seeing her in the library wasn't the first time I had saw her. Like I saw her on campus, mm -hmm. and I knew it because she had a ribbon on her messenger bag, mm -hmm. and that was how I knew. And I was like, "Oh, she cute." And so yes. then when I saw her in the library, I was like, "It was my sorority sister, Lindsay." I was like, "Lindsay." I need mm -hmm. you to go over there and invite her to a party. And she was like, why? Like, you real high school right now. Yes. You don't get your life. And so that's how it all began from there. And yeah. Z5 Soror. Z5 Soror. Yes. Miss Annette said, I'm from Alton, Illinois. Come on, Alton. Annette, let us know if you know any Caffies. Yes. Let us know if you know any Caffies from Alton, Illinois. Mm hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you, Patricia. And what Candy mm -hmm. left out is she's also a member of Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated. Mm -hmm. She joined Grad Chapter. I did. I um, did. And so she is also a member. Yes, of yes. Mm hmm. So shout out to our sororers. Yes, our founders was this past Monday, if I get get the dates right. So we um so we met in undergrad, and you know at the time we didn't really connect at that time. Mm -hmm. So Sean and I, once we did finally connect, we connected as friends. Yep. 
And we were actually best friends for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. You know, over the course of time, she started dating somebody. I started dating somebody. And just like friends, you know, you talk about your relationship. You talk about all of this other stuff. We never blurred any lines. And so um, she later told me, she was like, I really like always had a crush on you. And I was like, what? So I was telling one of my other friends, I was like, I don't see Sean like that. Mm -hmm. And she was like, no, you like, you need to get away from like the type that you've been dating and Sean will actually be good for you. And so like over the course of time, when we both were single, mm -hmm. we started talking and we started dating. And, you know, years ago when we were in our early 20s, we had no idea almost 20 years later where we'd be now. Yeah. But I don't know. We, we, we went from dating. So we got serious. Mm -hmm. We bought our first house. Yep. We were working in corporate America mm -hmm. together. Um, thank the you best, very much for the stars. The best friends already got questions, by the way. So I'm just, I'll let you whenever you're ready. <laughs> um, well, you want me to do the, the rest of the story or, or you want? Yeah. So, because I just, I'll just make sure I keep track of the questions. Okay. You want to write them down? <clears throat> I just fall back up. So we, um, so we bought, a, we bought a house. We worked in corporate America at State Farm together. Yep. Um, we worked our way up through the company. I told Sean, I said, they tapped me on the shoulder and they want me to be an insurance agent, which means you go from being an employee to a business owner. Sean was like, girl, I'm, I'm mark management ready. Like I'm, I'm about to be, they giving me a six figure seat mm -hmm. in a, in an office. And I was like, well, I need you to like relocate with me back up towards Chicago. And I really want, you know, I want us to start our lives together and I want to open this business and I want you to help me run it as my office manager. Like, and she was like, you know, right now, or she was I like, know? you want me to walk away from my career to help you with yours? Like, that's what you, but she did it. Yeah, she did it. And, um, I, I asked for her hand in marriage. And before I did that, I went to her whole family and I asked them for permission and I orchestrated this big, full out uh, proposal. Mm -hmm. And so we got married. Uh, at the time when we got married years ago, it was only legal in a couple of states. Mm -hmm. So we went to Iowa City, Iowa. Yep. We got married at the courthouse, just the two of us, mm -hmm. on my birthday. Yep. Um, to the point where the officiate had to bring witnesses because we yeah. didn't have anybody with us. Yeah, the lady was like, you got witnesses? <laughs> no, don't nobody know what we're doing. And so she was like, don't worry. I got some family members. Just pay them a couple of dollars and they'll come do it. So, so that's what we did. Because we had a very big wedding mm -hmm. that we did in Chicago that same year. We knew we were getting like, married in front of everybody that same year, that summer, mm -hmm. in July. So we were like, girl. So we were married for you know a couple of months before anybody knew. Yep. But yeah, then we we quickly opened our business, our insurance office. Then we opened a second location in Indianapolis. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, then we talked about really growing and having children. Mm -hmm. And um, Sean tried first. Yep. And we found out that Sean couldn't have kids if I was not successful. And um, so I looked at her that day in the doctor's office, and I said, "I'll do it." And she was like, you will? And I was like, of course, I'll do anything for you. And so um, we started that journey. Yeah. And they told us, they said, you know, typically most people have to do this several times and don't get your hopes up because most people are not successful. Mm -hmm. And we really tapped into um, our faith and, and prayer life. And I got pregnant the first time, first time with twins. And so um, my pregnancy was, whoo, child. And Sean took care of me every single day of that journey. And um, we had two beautiful kids. Mm -hmm. We had some ups and downs. Yes. After that. We did. Then what happened? Then we got divorced. Girl, them, uh, them downs was down. One day they was yeah. down. Them downs was down. Them right? downs was down. Okay. We got divorced. And shortly, probably within... Probably a year of the divorce, we was like, well, let's try this thing again. Because maybe, maybe we didn't quite do that right. Maybe we should have did something else. Yeah. So we got back together, got back together for about two years, mm -hmm. broke up again. 
Oh yeah. That breakup was public. That's why I said all of our business. Oh yeah, that was very public. All of our business Ooh. is here. Like if you ever just yes. are just super bored and just want to do like a Candy and Shine marathon, go back to the playlist <laughs> on this very page. Ooh. And all that stuff is there. Yeah. Um, broke up again. Um, Candy was dating someone else. Mm-hmm. Uh, we both wrote books in the meantime. Like it wasn't because of the breakup, but I wrote a book, book at first, and then Candy literally wrote her book while we were going through the divorce, which was very difficult because because I put it all in there. She put it all in there, <laughs> and I was the editor for her book. So mm-hmm. imagine that. Um, and mm-hmm. then the pandemic hit, and then she, her, and her um, girlfriend had broke up. Mm-hmm. Then the pandemic hit. We were. We were quarantined here together, and it was like, hmm, yeah, we'll get this thing again. I'll try again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> maybe third, fourth, fifth try, time is the charm. Mm-hmm. Okay, and then that's how we are here now. Erica said we was all mad at her. <laughs> no, Erica, y'all was all mad at her. Y'all was mad at me. Be honest. <laughs> Let me tell y'all, new best friends. Let me tell y'all something. See what happens is. No matter what happens between a couple, everybody in the world, whether they say it or not, they always blame the person that left. Mm -hmm. Because the first question that everybody asked me online was, they said, well, who initiated this? Right. Y'all breaking up and y'all not together no more. Who initiated this? And Sean was like, Candy. Girl, then the best friends came for me. Girl, they came for my neck. You hear what I'm saying? Because um, I initiated it, girl. Because I initiated it. So yeah, they came for my neck. You hear me? But um, but yeah, it was all it was love. It was love. But and I understand. I completely understand. Mm-hmm. But yes, there was there was so much that happened. It was a lot. There was so much that happened. It was a lot. Yeah. Um, let me see. Cause there was a question. Um, cause Miss Medea said, Do we still love each other? We do. We do. Um do you want to dive deeper into your side and I'll dive into my side? Oh, um, if I, I know it me. looks different. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah so, of course. So, yeah, I, I think that I will always have love for this woman till the day I die. Mm-hmm. No matter what that looks like. I will always love her. She's the mother of my kids. She has been there for me like no other person has ever been for me in my life. She provided for me like nobody has ever provided for me before. She was my best friend. Um, I could talk to her about anything. We laughed. We had great times. Like I, like I will always love Candy, regardless mm-hmm. of what's going on, what state we're in, whatever. So yes, I do still love her. Um, I think it looks different because mm-hmm. it's no longer that puppy love, that that innocent love, that that you know butterfly in, in the stomach love. It's not that just because of the difficulty that we have faced. However, I still love her. I will still run out in front of a moving vehicle for her. Like I will wow. do anything for her. Like I'll give her the shirt off my back. Like I like she is like no other. Like I always will. So yes, I absolutely do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I um, you know, I feel the same way. I was looking upstairs. I'm sorry, guys, because the kids just went upstairs to uh start their showers. Um but yeah, no, I feel the same way. I feel like our love has changed and change is not always bad. To Sean's point, we're 16 plus years in to being together on and off, but we're also almost 20 years in to knowing each other. Mm-hmm. So for me, when I think about how deep my love is for Sean, my mind goes back to the moments where I was pregnant and I was so sick. I was like, almost losing consciousness sometimes. And, you know, I was so sick that I couldn't even take care of myself. And I was too weak to even be able to get up and shower and change clothes and do, you know, do all of these things because I was on bed rest Mm -hmm. for most of the pregnancy. And Sean took care of me in ways you couldn't even imagine. And so it's a beautiful thing. And I look at couples, newer couples, and they be like, oh, baby, this and boo this and this my baby. And it's like, oh, okay. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. And I hope it never dies. But our love is something like when I had my hysterectomy, this was the first person who I saw when I opened my, my eyes. You understand what I'm saying? Like even when family members went home or didn't show up to the hospital during that process, Sean never left my side. You know, it, it's that kind of love. It's the kind of love where it's like if I'm if something happened to me and I'm not able to make decisions for myself, I don't second guess that she's going to prioritize what's in my best interest. And so it just looked different. And so I'm grateful for this kind of love. This that grandmama and granddaddy love. 
Yeah. You see what I'm saying? You know how like over time, grandma, and grandmama, and granddaddy more like brother and sister. Yeah, they do certain things certain times. We giving. You see what I'm saying? Like, like this is this is that. Like, mm -hmm. and so tying everything into what we do on this page, we love each other, but a part of us making the decision to get back together wasn't just the the butterflies. Mm -hmm. Part of us making a decision to get back together had everything to do with the goals that we had for our family, what was in the best interest of our children. You know, we talk about money all the time here. And I tell people, kind of tying everything back in, I tell people all the time, every other culture make decisions based on logic. Oftentimes we make decisions based on emotion. And that's not always bad, but... When we were divorced, here's what that looked like for us. That looked like two different households. Sean was somewhere having to pay, well, gonna have to pay a mortgage, and I'm over here having to pay a mortgage, right? Sean is over there having to pay a light bill, I'm over here having to pay a light bill. So all of the extra money that would have went towards saving, investing, building a, a business or building an empire, putting the kids through school, their travel sports that cost four thousand dollars each all of that so now we're in a position where we can still do it from two different households but it's much harder to do yeah. Yeah. you see what i'm saying and i'm not saying that we stay together only for money but when you have your children coming to you saying why don't y'all work it out again we want to be a family and then when we're getting along very well then you also look at the financial piece we both looked at each other and was like, let's go back to therapy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's go back to couples counseling. Yeah. It's worth another look. You see what I'm saying? And so that's 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 what we did. Um, Tanisha said, why did y'all break up? Oh, Tanisha. Ooh. <gasps> okay, how much you want? Buckle up, buttercup. <laughs> You're in for a ride. Right, so yes. Buckle up, Buttercup. And the, so mm -hmm. it was a combination of things. Mm -hmm. If I could give you the ingredients to a breakup, these are the ingredients for a breakup. Okay? Dishonesty, non-communication, infidelity, and distrust. Mm -hmm. Put all of those in the pot and, and stir them up real good and let them simmer for about mm, five years. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And there you have a breakup. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, it was a combination of things. Um, she said, why not marry when y'all got back together? Because it's one of those things that even if you decide that you're going to get back together, you have to figure out, okay, first of all, you don't just jump back in it because mm -hmm. you broke up for a reason. Okay? Yeah, that's true. That's true. So then you have to figure out, okay, if the reason that we broke up, is that still there? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Is, is there enough re reform that has happened? that will then make it feasible for you to get married again. And as crazy as it sounds, we've been back together since the pandemic. So that's been about two years, roughly, give or take, maybe a little less. Mm -hmm. We're still trying to figure that out. Yeah. Because even since stuff has happened, you know what I mean? Yeah. And so it's one of those things where you But have, nothing like cheating, though. Yeah, nothing, nothing like no, that. No, no. It's communication. Like, like yeah. if... Like, communication takes her, her up out of here. And I suck yeah. at communication. And I'm working so hard yeah. to get better at it. But that takes her up out of here. And that's our one and only issue. Can I be transparent right now? Like, because we've matured, we've grown, we've developed, we've healed. Mm -hmm. Our only one issue is communication. Mm -hmm. Girl, it, and Sean is right. It takes me up out of here with skates on. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? And so, like, yeah, like, communication is huge. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, it's huge. You and know? so to answer your question, that's the reason why. And I think that I also have recognized that I have work that I need to do on myself um, before I can even say that I feel like I'm a feasible um, spouse for her. So mm. there's some things that I still have to work on on myself. And I wouldn't even I wouldn't even present that to her because that's unfair, because then I'd be cheating her twice in this lifetime. And why would you do that? You know what I mean? So somebody said Candy was smelling her. So wait, what? down yet wait let me see let's let's keep going because we said we we're gonna answer all questions i tried to delete that but i couldn't but i'll get to it later okay um let me see let me see let me see um 
uh, Michelle said, why did you leave Candy? Wait, Daphne said, why oh, did you Oh, okay, got gotcha, you, got gotcha. you. So, they all, they've always lived with Candy. Mm -hmm. So, when I, when we did separate and I did move out uh, for that period of time, I was in Chicago living with my grandmother and um, the kids stayed here with Candy. Mm -hmm. um, but it was very, very uh, amicable when it comes to like, you know, seeing the kids and stuff. Like, she never... She never, like, it was an open door. Like, it was no problem with me ever being able to come see the kids. Sometimes they would come to Chicago with me. Like, that was never a problem. So, we got back together probably a month before Sean was about to buy another house. Mm -hmm. So, she was in the process of buying another house. And things had went pretty far in that process. And COVID hit, or the pandemic hit. Mm -hmm. And when the pandemic hit, if you guys remember, if your minds go back to that time, girl, we didn't know if it was growing up our people's hair. We didn't know, girl, if it was in your coat. People was falling out in the street dead. We just knew. You see what I'm saying? And y'all know I'm a y'all know I'm a germaphobe. Yes. So it was like everything that I had been thinking yes. my whole life. And and I girl, I could have had a bullhorn in the middle of the street, like I told you so. You see what I'm saying? This world is nasty. You see what I'm saying? So, like, when everything shut down, I called Sean and said, either you in or you out. Right. I'm finna lock the house down. I'm Girl, I'm having groceries delivered. Like, Armageddon is here. You see what I'm yeah. saying? Like, either you in or you out. And so, I pretty much told Sean, I said, girl, I don't know what's out there. Mm -hmm. I know I got asthma. And I know how, like, people is falling out, girl. And I don't know, girl. I don't know if it if it's... I don't know. Girl. Right. I don't know. She was so, like, oh, you ain't on this side of the door? <laughs> so, I told her, I said, girl, when I hit... When I put that double lock on and I put that chain... Girl, when you... When you put... Look. <laughs> when you put that chain up there, if you... If your key won't turn. Okay? That's You'll it. be looking for your children and the girl, they'll be... They'll be 18 when you see them again. Okay? <laughs> so... Sean came and I told her I said just bring girl I, cause I don't, I, said, I don't know where this thing is going cause at first remember they was like oh we're gonna just shut the world down for two weeks yeah it was gonna be a short term thing we went live and I said bullshit <laughs> you see what I'm saying I told y'all then I said nah so I told Sean I said just bring like a month worth of stuff mm -hmm. and then obviously you do laundry or whatever we'll, we'll play it by ear Yeah. but at least that way we're all together mm -hmm. so Sean was literally about to buy. She was in the process of looking. She was looking. She had a whole realtor. She had been a, like, girl, the whole thing was moving. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So, uh, let's see. Oh, Drusella said it's good to see you guys back together. Thank you. Uh, we answered that already, Christiana. What was the reason for the divorce? Mm -hmm. Um, Anthony said, you two remind me so much of the relationship I had with my ex, mutual respect, love that he passed away a few years ago. Mm, oh, I'm so sorry to hear I'm that. I'm sorry to hear that, baby. Wow. Uh, oh, Daphne said, what kind of delivery did you have with the twins? So I had a C-section. I had. A, can I be honest with y'all? Sean and I did not agree. I wanted her to have, a, a, not a natural birth, like a, no medicine, but I wanted to her to, like I was ready to go to Lamaze classes. Like I wanted to do the whole experience, but true transparency best friends i think what it was i've always wanted to birth a child myself mm -hmm. and because i was never able to do it i think i was trying to live vicariously through her like i would rub her stomach i would be trying to feel a move i would be like how do you feel today what does it feel like mm -hmm. like i was just trying to to have that experience even though i, I knew i couldn't have it firsthand mm -hmm. so when it came to the birth i was like yeah let's go like i want to go mm -hmm. through the, the mom classes with you i'm ready to be holding your, your shoulders and all of that and she was like i said girl i'm not pushing her now yes you can girl <laughs> she was like mm -mm. no i said girl I said, girl, this cookie is certified by the government. You think I'm finna let a child rip this? Girl, you think? <laughs> and then on top of it, girl, like, our, 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 our uh, doctor didn't make it no, no better. She was like, well, in all honesty, I prefer to do C-sections with twins. Mm -hmm. She said, because honestly, you could try to go ahead and, and do it with the first. You could push mm -hmm. the first. And then we still have to do a C-section anyway for the second. Yeah. Yeah. That's all this one had to hear. Yeah, that's all and, I had to hear. And let me add this, best friends. Not only was it twins, it was a boy and a girl. They in two different sacks, girl. <laughs> They're in two different sacks. 
So, girl, one, like you, like the lady said, the one to come out the right way, then the other one be upside down. They got to go in and twist it. Mm, no, girl. What? No, no. Up where? To who? And Kennedy was, like, wait, who was 5 pounds, 11 ounces? Um, That was, somebody was 5 pounds, 11 ounces, and somebody was 6 pounds, 2 ounces. Kennedy was six pounds, two ounces. Kayla was 5'11", because during the pregnancy, he always weighed more than her. And then when they came out, she was heavy. Yeah. So I was like, what'd you do to him the last few weeks? And I'm like, girl, you think you think all that's coming about of me? <laughs> girl? No. Girl? My property value will go down down there. Girl? My, my cookie? Girl? Mm -hmm. My appraisal will be worth less. Uh-uh. <laughs> No. Uh, the trigger said I was mad at Sean for a minute, then I started feeling bad for both. Aww. Aww. Um, Diane said, Are you currently married? If not, then uh, I think you said, Then why? So, no, we're not currently married, but mm -hmm. we kind of expounded on that. Mm -hmm. um, oh, Medea, she said I had a girl for 20 years, but she left me. I'm sorry. Tell her it's her loss. Tell right. her she ain't going to find another you. Yes. Um, let me see. Um, Tanisha said, this is great transparency for couples like us. My partner and I broke up after 20 years and got back together and it looks different. It's grown up love now. It is. Exactly. It's different. Yes, girl. This is grown people love. This is, this is, that's exactly what it is. You see what I'm saying? And I feel like it's one of those things that when you break up with someone and you make the, the conscious decision to come back to it, mm -hmm. it's going to be a grown up type of love because think of what you went through. Mm -hmm. So you have that in the forefront. You're you're making a conscious effort. That's one of those things where like, no, I'm choosing to be here because we've already seen that I don't have to be. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, but I'm choosing. Yeah. So it looks different that way. You know what I mean? And can I be honest? Like for me, um, Sean and I have been together for so long. Even, excuse me, even when she has to go to Chicago because she's her grandmother's caretaker. Her grandmother is almost 90. Mm -hmm. So she's her grandmother's caretaker. So she'll go to Chicago one or two days a week just to make sure her grandmother's okay. Even for that short time, I feel like out of sorts mm -hmm. because there's a lot of stuff that Sean does. And so life without her is not as easy as and enjoyable as life with her. Mm hmm you know what I'm saying? Like when you're not here, like I, I kind of be lost a little mm -hmm. bit. I do. I do. But if you're honest with yourself, you be needing it sometimes. Oh yeah, because you get on my nerves. See, absolutely, See? absolutely. Yeah. Now listen, you gonna you going to Chicago Sunday, mm -hmm. and you're gonna be there Monday, Sunday mm -hmm. and Monday. Yep. So, like, if you had to leave right now, I'd really be missing you. Mm -hmm. Earlier this week, you'd be like good riddance and girl. Good earlier this week, State of Tuesday. Remember we we our communication wasn't well, communicating. Yeah, girl, and my hairline was like just, <laughs> and I was like, oh girl, my wig, girl, it just was scooting back, girl. I swear, I swear, girl, I could not do Sean earlier yeah, this week. It was it was rough. But like, and how it's, it's now? the thing though, and best friends, like y'all, most of the time y'all never know. And it's not that anything be fake. Let no. me tell y'all. Let me tell y'all how powerful social media is for us. You know how, like, when you were a little kid, you would, you would write in your diary. This is very much so like my diary. So this is like my outlet, for real, for real. Because I, I have friends, but girl, I don't like to talk to people. People are weird. <laughs> so I come here. And this is like, this is like a relief for me. So even when we're having a rough day, it's something about when we hit that button, mm -hmm. our chemistry is so natural that whatever's going on with us, it's literally better even after we get off camera. Yeah. It's the yeah. weirdest thing. Don't you agree, yeah. Matt? I do because a lot of times when we were going through our breakup and... Because, like, the best friends in the comments that have been with us will tell you, especially for the new friends. Yeah. And I'm so glad that we're doing this because I think that this will this will help a lot of the new friends that are joining the page, especially the ones that was like, well, why don't I talk about your own business? Mm -hmm. But when we were going through our breakup and stuff like that, we didn't skip a beat. Like, it was like maybe one or two days we was like, you know what? It's team too much today. I cannot mm -hmm. do this with you. Like, I, yeah. I don't care what you got to say. I can't even get on here and fake the funk with you today. But on average, we did not miss a beat. Candy and Sean was Candy and Sean, no matter what was going on, to the point where we was planning a meet and greet. <laughs> I remember that. Okay. 
I you was ready to break for me. DJ, we had yes. we had bartenders set up. We was finna we was finna we had a venue. We was finna get it down. Okay, we out a venue uh-huh. for the meet and greet, and then we ended up telling y'all that we had broke up. Girl, mm-hmm. when I tell you them ticket sales dried up so fast, people was like, "I'm not coming to no meet and greet. Y'all not together, girl." And I was like. I said, but I'm still Sean and she's still candy and we still candy and Sean. So like I was like, this still my soror, this still my baby mama, like this still like what you mean? So it was like that said, like we don't skip a beat. Like at the end of the day, we know that we 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 have a bigger purpose than just what's going on between us. And we can't let that get in the way of anything else. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um let me see. Daphne said, who cheated? Both of us. So, but let me clarify. Let me clarify. Sean, it was emotional. Like, so she, so she met somebody. Um, they were talking. Well, I, you, you tell it. Yeah. So I didn't, um, I didn't physically cheat with anybody, but I definitely was not doing what a married woman should do. Okay. I was mm-hmm. having inappropriate conversations and inappropriate pictures. It's like, I was not doing what a married woman should do. Okay. But like Candy said, mine was more emotional to the point where I didn't even, like hang out with this person there was no dates there was no like none of that like it was just Mm -hmm. i think for me i was feeding a lack of what i felt like i was missing as far as like attention attention and Mm -hmm. the the little sweet moments because at the time like candy was starting a whole business like she didn't have time to be doing the roses and the mm-hmm. let me let me rub your back and the let's watch movies and giggle together. Like she was going for series six and three six and sixty three licenses, trying yeah. to learn how to sell life insurance, how to understand how to help people with their mortgages and like run a mm-hmm. business, hire employees, find a find a, a, a location. Like she had serious stuff on her plate. Mm-hmm. And me, selfish me in the black in the background was like, well, what about me? Like. What about all? What about me? And so I was then trying to feed something that I was lacking rather than being an adult and being like, hey, this is how I'm feeling. Let's see if we can do something about it. Mm-hmm. Then I started going back to what I used to do before I was a married woman when I was playing in these streets before I started hang- before I started dating Candy. And it goes back to the lack of communication. Yeah. Because she was feeling that way. And a lot of people will be like, okay, well, Candy, why didn't you just balance your career and your, your professional goals with your marriage? Mm-hmm. But I didn't know. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? She was feeling some type of way and she wasn't communicating to me that she was feeling it. Mm-hmm. So I thought we was okay. Yep. You yeah. know, and so at that point in time, I'm coming to her and I'm like, look, I, you, you know, I need, you see what I'm saying? Grown folk time. And I'm like, you know, well, what's up? You know, mm-hmm. and so then, then, then I was like, okay, like, look, I keep, we keep, we keep being at this impasse. Like, what, what are we going to do here? Yeah. And so I, I am loyal to a fault. Mm-hmm. I'm loyal to a fault in friendship, mm-hmm. in business, with my family and absolutely with my partner. Mm-hmm. And so I kept communicating and Sean wasn't right. And I kept telling her what I was needing because she had stopped giving it to me. And so she just, it was like one ear and out the other. Mm -hmm. And so she was having needs, but she didn't, she wasn't communicating to me what she was needing. Mm -hmm. And so we were, we were at this, you know, this impasse. And so I came to her on several occasions and I'm like, look, Sean, like, you know, we, we got these small kids. I went through this pregnancy and because I was so sick, we weren't really, Mm -hmm. And then afterwards, when they were small and, you know, I was healing and we were trying to, you know, get on schedule with them, we weren't. And so now, like, you know, whatever. And now we, you know, whatever. So she was like, and I'm communicating like, this is, this is a concern. This is an issue. Yeah. You know, and I'm in my mid twenties at the time. I'm like, girl, look. (laughs) So I finally came to her and was like, look, you grown and I'm grown. I'm one thing I'm not is a liar. So I told her, I said, I don't want, I don't want to cheat on you, but that's where it's going. Mm-hmm. And Sean said, because I'm loyal to a fault and she never thought that it would, go, would come to this. I kept saying, you know, this is what I'm going to do. And so Sean was like, if that's what you feel like you got to do, do it. Selling wolf tickets. Because I didn't think she was doing anything. Because like she said she was going into a fault. Like, when I tell you that <clears throat> Candy is the type of person, like, 
If you if you in her circle, you in her circle. Mm-hmm. Okay? And she's not going to do anything to betray that at all. And so I was like, yeah, she's saying that, but... Mm-hmm. Okay. So, and, and so... And I'm not, we're not going to transition here, but I'm going to say this. And if you know, you know, right? Pick up what I'm putting down. There's certain people that I've attached myself to or I've allowed to attach themselves to me in friendship or what I thought was heading towards friendship. But if I feel like it's one-sided or somebody is using me or coming to me or Sean and you only coming to us when it benefits you, but it's not mutual, then I'll cut myself from that person. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? You guys have publicly seen me ride for somebody, cut myself and Sean from that communication. And then everybody be like, oh, I thought you you was cool with such and such. But now you're like, yeah, and it's because I'm loyal to a fault. Mm-hmm. And so in my history or in the past, when I have not felt that that was reciprocated or there are signs that the person is a taker, I got to cut it. I cut it immediately. Mm-hmm. I cut it without warning because I know it's it's going nowhere fast. Mm-hmm. So if you know, you know. Read between the lines, right? Right. Um, let's see. They was talking, some people were talking about they pushed both their twins out. Thank you so much for the uh, stars, Miss Patricia. Thank you very much. Um, Sharice said, I was sad when it happened because I love y'all together. I don't even know y'all personally, but I've been following for a long time. But I'm so happy for you both. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you said, Candy, you cracking me up. Mm-hmm. Um, Stephanie said, Are we going to get remarried? We don't know. We don't know. I would like us to, but I don't think we're, I don't think we're ready. Mm-hmm. I don't think we're ready yet. I think, I think we've done a lot of work, mm-hmm. but I think there's still, there's still some areas where there's work to be done, and we're still doing the work. Yeah. I think we're in a good place, you. I think so. I think we're in a good place. Yeah. We have okay. our moments, but it's to be expected. Um, Daphne said, Candy, you don't like being single. Are you needy? No, no. I'm fine with being single. Actually, that's a misread. I'm okay with being single. In fact, I was telling Sean that if we couldn't get on the same page, like when we decided to get back together around COVID, I was telling Sean that um, if we didn't work out, I would. I had already committed in my mind, I would be single until the kids left the house. Because I'm so laser focused on, I'm not who I used to be. I, I, I can see that I've evolved and I'm, I've matured in a lot of ways. Um, but I'm so laser focused on um, building my businesses and taking care of the kids and just really just living a good life. I don't know. Like I've, a lot of people have not been blessed or fortunate enough to experience life the way I have. I've been married. I always wanted to be married ever since I was a little girl. I've experienced that. Um, I've been in love more than one time. I'm grateful for that. I always wanted to be a mother. I have that. Um, You know, always wanted to, you know, have a house and stuff. So like everything that I really wanted, of course, there's always room for more. But for the most part, all of what I've wanted, I've, I've gotten. So if it don't come back around, I'm okay with that. Yeah, you don't feel like you're missing out on anything. I'm okay if if I was single for the next. The kids are nine, so they're probably gonna be here till you know eighteen or so. I'm fine if I was single for the next nineteen. I'm okay with that because not to say that a relationship is a distraction, but I don't have another party that I would have to consider yeah. if I wanted to put twelve, fourteen, sixteen hours into pushing the business forward. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? And I would go out and get a cat. No, girl, Sean no, is a would. girl. Sean is a Scorpio. No, I'm not interested. The way no, it, a lot has changed. <laughs> really? Yeah. yeah I, I mean, would, I, and I'm. I, well, you know what? I, I believe you. Cat and be deuces on everything. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. Sheree yeah. said, "What's sorority?" Um, Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated. Mm-hmm. Um, let me see. Latrice said, "Oh, she's telling people to go purchase your book. I'm sure." She said, "Y'all need oh. to purchase the book. Thank me later. Good read." Um, this is the book. If you if you guys are interested in the book, moments of redemption. Look, don't judge. Both pictures of me. That is a nice cover. I don't know why you say that every time you show that book, girl. What? That's why ain't nobody seeing my hand hot dog neck? Oh my god. 
Girl, um, why ain't nobody tell me I had hot dog neck? Girl, you're not gonna do it. But so the so the cover of the book represents the feminine side of me and the masculine side of me, mm -hmm. girl. And me accepting and embracing both sides. Yes. So the title of the book is Moments of Redemption. Mm -hmm. It's literally all, it's very, very detailed about what we sharing plus mm -hmm. some questions y'all ain't even think to ask. Yep. Me going to jail when I was in college, girl. Me being homeless in college. Mm -hmm. Girl, th this is this is my whole life, girl. Wish on everything. But anyway, it's available on CandySincerityJohnson.com. Yeah. So that's moments of redemption. Um, Cherie said lack of attention and communication is exactly what destroyed my marriage. I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, I'm all oh, sure. Mine's too. Yeah. Um, it's hard, girl. Oh, the trigger said was it the episode where you came home early on live that broke the ice? Uh, no, it was a lot of stuff prior to that. Everybody remember that. Yeah, everybody remembers that and they think that that was like a pivotal moment. That really wasn't a pivotal, pivotal moment. I was so hurt that night. You were, and I didn't even realize it. So, so y'all, okay, so for the best friends that missed it, there was one night. I told y'all, girl, we've been doing this for a long time. Mm -hmm. For the best friends that missed it, imagine this. We live in Illinois. We have the Chicago insurance office. We have the Indianapolis office. Indianapolis, from where we live, is what? Four hours. Four hours, yeah. Three and a half, almost four hours. So I would go over there maybe one day a week or once every two weeks to check on that office. Um, I had hired my cousin to be my office manager over there. So my team reported to her. She reported to me, et cetera. So imagine this. That morning, four o'clock that morning, I think it was, I had went over to Indianapolis. I had corporate meetings. I had to go to the office to do some training with the team. I grabbed food, get on the expressway, and I come back. So not only had I been driving all day, I had been in meetings and working all day. I come back because I was missing Sean, was missing the kids. It's about mm, nine o'clock at night, something like that. I don't know. I pull onto the street. I go live on our page, on this page. I go live and I'm like, yo, I'm I'm surprising Sean and the kids. I'm, you know, whatever. The kids probably in the bed. I just wanted to be with her. Mm -hmm. Right? So I'm surprising Sean. I walk through the door, and the first thing Sean says is, What you doing here? What you doing here? I'm sorry. <laughs> But okay, now now look, now look, come on, best friends. Now look, this girl I'm looking like girl, this is my damn house. What you what you doing here? You know what I'm saying? That's what that's what went to my mind. Okay, can can we be honest? Can we be transparent? Now, for the best friends that have this book, let me let me draw let me draw the parallel for you because I don't even think you drew the conclusion. Mm -hmm. For the best friends that have this book. Remember the chapter where I came home and I caught my ex? Oh, oh. You see what I'm saying? Is that what you thought? Oh my God. Well, I didn't know. I'm not, no, no, no. I didn't think that you had somebody here. Oh, but it was very reminiscent. It, it, in that instance, in that instance, the 30 something year old Candy went back in time to the 18, 19 year old me and felt that sense of betrayal. Oh. So in my mind, I'm like, is she on the phone with somebody? Right. Like, what is she? Because that was the time that I was suspecting something mm -hmm. and it was. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? But I just had no proof. Mm. So in my mind, so I'm like, I've been working all day. I've been providing. I've been doing this. I've been doing that. I, I'm missing you. Yeah. I come home, and that's what it was. That was the first thing oh, that. Wow. So I was hurt. I was crushed. Mm -hmm. So the best friends that was live with me that night was like, "Candy, don't get mad. This, that, and the third. And so I sat and I was trying to process my feelings, and I was getting angry. Mm -hmm. But what you guys have to understand. Is when people show up angry, it's hurt. Redirected. Mm. When people show up, um, you know, usually, I mean, emotions come out in different ways. And sometimes it's as it's presented. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes it's something different. Mm -hmm. So in that moment, 
I was so hurt. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But when your wife is also your best friend, who you gonna call and talk to? Yeah. Because at the time, like now, for those of you guys who know, Ariel was my best friend. Mm -hmm. Me and Ariel didn't know each other then. Right, right. You see what I'm saying? So there was no, who am I supposed to call mm -hmm. and talk to about this and process this with? Mm hmm. Mm. Yeah. So the best friends was like everybody in the comments was like, "Well, Candy, Sean didn't mean it like that." Blah blah blah. And it's like, and I get that, but you didn't. You, it's always anytime you anytime you're in a relationship, you bring the back. You still bring yeah. the scars from other stuff. Even if you're healed, you still bring the scars. You still bring the scars. That brought me. Uh, no, keep talking. But yeah, no, that was it. That was it. Uh, What's thank the next you so much question? for the stars, Ms. Vanessa. Um, let me see. Let me go. Thank you so much for the stars, Ms. Cassandra. Thank you very much for the stars. Jackie said, this is too good to eat popcorn. Oh my gosh. How Tammy. you doing? Z5. Z5. Sharice said, AKM the house. I know that's right. What yes. Alpha. Um, I mean, Sharice. Said, we still live together. I'm just tuning in. Yes, yes, yes. Cherie, um, Cherie, all of the women in my family are AKAs. Like, Y'all probably heard me tell the story a million times, girl. They told me when I came home with that Zeta jacket, but they told me, they was like, girl, send them people they come back. Please. <laughs> girl, it was a whole thing. But yes, Anita said, do y'all still live together? Yes, we do. Mm -hmm. Yes, we do. This is our house. Mm -hmm. This is our house. Yes. Girl, this is our house, girl. Thank you so much for the stars, Auntie Fee. Thank you very much for the stars. Um, Cindy said, your authenticity is everything. Thank, Thank you. you. That's all we know how to do. Um, Felicia, Auntie Fee said you had a moment of a bad flashback. Mm-hmm. Um, Anita said, what made her ask that? Oh, what made me ask? Okay. Yeah. So the reason why I asked that, this is the, this is the thing. What I'm looking for, I'm looking for this quote that she said in her, in her book about baggage that I think is going, is really dope, but I'll find it later. Um, so the reason why I asked her that, it, it took me by surprise because this, I had a routine. Mm -hmm. Every single time that Candy went to Indianapolis, I had a routine because Candy is very much so a germaphobe. She very much so likes the house a certain way, night, nice and tidy, clean, etc. So I always would have this routine that when she went to Indianapolis, especially if she was staying overnight or for a couple of days, I would always try to time it down to a science because I wanted to have the whole house clean. I used to be sweeping floors, mopping floors, vacuuming carpets, making a bit like I always wanted her to come home to a clean house because Excuse I knew me. she had been working hard. She had been on the road. She'd been dealing with mess. She and she just needed to come home to a peaceful place. But what I don't, what I didn't used to tell her was I would let certain things lack a little bit. <laughs> because Girl, she was be here. Girl. And so I would always time it because I knew when she was coming or she'd be like, hey, I'm about to hit the road. I'd be like, great. So even if it was the last few things that I had to get done, I knew I had at least three hours to get it done. Mm hmm so with her popping up, and the kids day, were small then. And the kids were small, so you so know, you know all the extra work with two little, you know, with three year olds, four, however exactly, they were there. with two little ones and all that. So with her popping up, it threw my whole plan <laughs> off. Like, like when I tell you, the house was not in my standards. Like the house is never nasty, but I always brought it from a clean standard to a candy standard, if that makes sense. Yeah. And yeah. so at the time it was just at a clean standard. Like the mm -hmm. average person would have walked in here and been like, it's what, are fine. You, what are you talking about? Yeah. And so for me, when her, when she popped in, like there was still dishes and like it was still stuff going on that I yeah. knew that I thought that I still had time because I didn't expect her to come home to the next day. Mm -hmm. And so when she walked in, it was almost like that feeling of, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, what's supposed to be here? Right. So that was my major reaction. Like, what you doing here? Because I didn't have time to finish my presents. <laughs> so it was so so now this is a prime example, you guys. What did we say our biggest issue is? Communication, Communication. right? I came in. Now, if I called you and it was just me and you on the phone, I'm gonna be like, girl. I'm so mad at Sean. And you're going to be like, girl, what happened? Tell me what happened. Mm -hmm. Well, girl, I get off work. I have been working, this, that, and the third. And I tell you everything from my perspective. You're going to be like, girl, that's trifling. She's so inconsiderate. Girl, she's so ungrateful. You loving her and you loyal and you doing this, that, and the third. And she's going to look at you and say, what? <laughs> now, if Sean called you mm -hmm. and you never got my side and she's telling you, girl, 
I, you know, Candy came home, girl, she had an attitude that was mad and blew up and blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. And you'd be like, girl, what's her mind? She crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like, so again, it's communication. Yeah. Same situation. We seen it two different ways. Mm -hmm. We seen it two different ways. Yeah. So that's really what it was. Mm -hmm. Um, Erica said, yeah, yeah, yes, anger is a secondary emotion. Um, let me see. What, oh, Daphne said, what do the kids call you guys? So they um, call me Mima. Hold on, let me ask. <laughs> KK, come to the stairs, please. So on the weekends, they stay up late. What do you guys call us? Mom. You call me what? Uh -huh. Who's this? Mima. Oh, oh <laughs> thank you. So they call me mom uh, and Sean Mima. And it's but, so funny because for some cultures and some families, Mima is usually grandmother. <laughs> so when we're out, sometimes they hear people. I have I've seen people. They have seen, heard them call me Mima mm -hmm. and assume they were my grandkids. Yeah. <laughs> instead of my children. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and I'm like, and we really came up with the whole me my thing when she was still pregnant because we were literally trying to figure that out. We were like, what are we, what are we gonna have them call us or whatever? Mm -hmm. And naturally, mom for her, of course. And then I was trying to figure out something. So what I did was I took mommy and I just flipped it, me ma, mommy. That's really what it was for me. It was mm -hmm. just turning mommy backwards. So that's where it came from. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, let me see. Um, Doreen said, didn't know you are Zeta. Hey, Sora. Hey, Sora. Hey, Sora. Come on. Blue and white in the building. Yes. Uh, Erica said, yes, I do the same for my OCD boyfriend. And it throws me off when he surprises me. Um, let's see. Wanda said, can you remember when you were in the hotel? Yes. Yes. I oh, told you had them shoes. Remember girl? them shoes? The was shoes? You, was oh you on God. the episode where I had them shoes, girl? I, you, I laughed so hard. Remember yeah. I had on them penny loafers, girl? Them yes. cheap penny loafers? Yeah. No, it wasn't, it wasn't no penny. Were they penny? No. They were, they were like, they were They some, weren't loafers. I thought they were some loafers. They oh were God. some kind of shoes. you had left your, your house shoes. Yeah, girl. And I couldn't Something. walk around in them. I couldn't walk around the floor barefoot. That's nasty. So, girl, I had on them dress shoes. Girl, I was walking. Girl, you know you got to get up and go to the bathroom in the hotel room. Girl, we finna get up in them in them penny loafers, girl. Them right. Girl. Oh, too funny. Your yes. sayings at the end of each chapter is so profound to me. I'm just sitting here reading them. I can't find the one I was looking for, but anyway. Really? Oh, my God. Okay. So, let me see. Uh, what you, oh, she said, what's on the matching chains? Oh, hey, see. So, oh, they're not matching. They're not matching. They kind of look like because they both look like doll tags but they're not matching so this is just one of the chains that is on our e-commerce site so i just wanted to wear something different so this is one of the the necklaces that's available on our website and then candy's yours is it says mm. um her said so my and mine doesn't say anything and then her says to my daughter oh this is the one that you're supposed to wear for kennedy right mm -hmm. okay so it says to my daughter um i want you to i want you to believe deep in your heart Oh, God, I can't read. That's too small. But anyway, it's something <laughs> dealing with daughter. Um, girl, my eyesight is bad. But I had one for son and lost that one. Yeah, it's a whole little thing. But she did have one for her daughter and for son. Yeah. Um, let me see. Anita said, now that you know that, Candy, will you now call before coming home? <laughs> No, 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 no. It'll be one of those things where like, okay, let's see if we can run this back again. Okay. Yeah. Um, let me see. Um, uh, <laughs> Drusilla said my husband was a trucker. We owned our own trucking company and we would wait for him to come home. No surprises, please. Yes. Oh, Anita, this is a good one. She said, do you know each other's love language? That's a good question. I think it's changed. I feel, yeah, I feel like it's changed. Yeah. We did know it because that was one of the exercises that we had to do when we went to couples counseling, mm -hmm. when we were trying to work on um, getting back together and everything. And yeah. we had learned about the whole five love languages and our therapist had us do the test, figure it out. And it was like a real aha moment because once we figured out what our love languages were, it was like, man, now I see why sometimes we just be missing each other because mm -hmm. I'm trying to love you one way because I think that's what you want and what you need and what you deserve. And that's not even your love language. Like, that don't even mean nothing for you. Yeah. And then vice versa, same way. 
So we did know them. I think we probably should take it again because it's been a long time. And like Candy said, I feel like they have changed or shifted in some way. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So we did. Mm -hmm. um, let me see. Tammy said, is the book on Amazon? It is. But can I be transparent? Oh, of course I can. Because that's right. what we do that's over here. It is, but you would never hear me uh, publicize that, right? We will prefer you to get it from the website. When you purchase it from our website, it's autographed by me. Um, you know, and then of course we get the full amount of the proceeds mm -hmm. from from the sale of the book. You get a versus, yeah, versus Amazon, like they take the lion's share of it, mm -hmm. and it's like, girl, I wrote it. How yeah. you gonna say the lion's share? And so, what I found out recently, I looked back at mine. I hadn't looked at mine in so long. Um, there's ways where people can like resell your book for a cheaper price. I think I went on there one day and it was like seven dollars. I was like, seven dollars for what? Right. Who's selling my book for way seven dollars? Yeah. So uh -huh. yeah, so I don't I mean both of our books are on Amazon, but I like she said, we won't we won't openly tell you that, but we won't mm -hmm. deny it either. Because we don't never want nobody to be like, Well, why I pay that over there and it's all Amazon for this. No, I'm gonna tell you what it is, but mm -hmm. yeah, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let me see. Avoya says, Sean, why do you think you are not a not a communicator? You know, I don't know why. I think I'm trying to get to the root of that. Um, that's why I said I'm doing some work on myself on my own. Um, and I don't know why. I don't know where that stems from. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, I just never have been. It's not like it was something that I, that I did and then just stopped. But what I will say is in prior relationships. I was never, I don't think I was expected to communicate as much as I was expected to communicate once I got with Candy. Mm. So for me, yeah. I thought everything was cool. I was like, yeah. I'm good. Like, I don't have no problem communicating. I was fine. Like, that's never been an issue. Nobody has ever, before Candy, nobody ever said, you suck at communication. Like, that was never an issue. Wow. So for me, I was like, what do you mean? Yeah. So yeah. So mm. um, um one best friend said, What's your website? So the website is candysincerityjohnson.com. Mm -hmm. So basically the name of the page, my dot com, candysincerityjohnson.com. <laughs> Anita said candy carry the twins. Wow, amazing. You can tell I'm new. <laughs> yeah. It's okay. Yeah. Oh, can you pull it up on, on your phone, the pregnancy picture? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So y'all wanna see me look, y'all wanna see me. <laughs> Girl, I was laid out, baby. I was laid out she, on that couch. This was a week before the twins got here. Baby, when I say I was laid out on that couch, I was so sick. She I used cried to say she was every right day. Line. Girl, I cried every day. Imagine every minute of your life for nine straight months having the absolute worst nausea that you've ever had. Like, nothing worked. Medication didn't work to the point where the doctor was like, okay, the next thing we're gonna have to do is send a nurse into the house and you're gonna be on IV a couple times a week. Like we like you can't get dehydrated, you can't like I wasn't even able to keep water down. It was horrible, baby. Horrible. How I got this big, the world would never know. I don't even this know. This is literally a, a picture of candy one week before the twins got here. Girl, I couldn't, my shoes wouldn't fit. <laughs> Girl, nothing. <laughs> she was she, they were born in November and I was walking around in these girl Adidas slides with the Velcro because my shoes wouldn't fit. My feet could. I had elephant feet, girl. <laughs> they girl, said, <laughs> girl, I know, girl. I was, I was horrible. Trust me, I have much cuter girl, pregnancy pictures of her. I was horrible, girl. girl it was a bad time. <laughs> it was a bad time. That's why, look, 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 look. It ain't their fault, girl. That, girl, why people be having 18 year old kids and be like, give me grace for all this all this extra in the front. Look, 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 give me grace for all this extra in the front, girl. Yeah, I had all that in me. From nine years ago. <laughs> From nine years ago, girl. Yeah. Uh, Jackie said, when did you both discover that you were gay? Um, My first girlfriend, believe it or not, was when I was 15. So she knew early on. Yeah, my first girlfriend. I mean, I dated guys too, but girl, my first girlfriend was when I was 15. <laughs> Um, I started dating women when I was in college. However, I always knew probably since kindergarten that I felt something like something was different. Kennedy. And I just, I just didn't know what that was. 
Um, but I didn't act on it until college. Yeah. Who, who's in the bathroom? No, but I didn't get my clothes Okay. Never mind. <laughs> Can't even look at her. Because I'm like, the light is on, right? The light, like, is it me? The light is on. The door is open. Nobody's in there, but the light is on. The door is open. Girl, is she looking like, duh? And I'm looking like, well, like, it's not a dumb question. Cause <laughs> Daphne, thank you so much. She said y'all are my favorite couple right now. Thank you so much. Thank you. Don't say right now. Say period. Say y'all are, say y'all are my favorite couple. Period. <laughs> um, Sean, uh, Wanda said, Sean, I remember when Savannah did your, yes, remember he did my makeup for my book cover? Yes. He jammed on that. I love that. I think it is the crazy, now this shows you the power of social media. Girl, when they be calling him Savannah, I be like, I was about to say, who? Y'all are my brain. Bring me up. Bring me up. Yes. Um, Evoya said, did you grow up in a household where you were engaged in conversation? Did your parents communicate? So, um, she unpacking you, girl, like she, a suitcase. Right, she put me <laughs> So my father was not present in my household. Um, my mom and my dad separated when I was very, very small. And so it, my mom was a single mom when she raised me. Um, and as far as communication, I mean, I guess as much as you would talk to your mom, like, mm -hmm. I don't know, it was just me and my mom. So um, mm -hmm. I didn't have any siblings or anything like that until much later. My mom didn't have my sisters until she had my middle, the middle girl when I was 13 and then the youngest baby when I was 16. So... You know, so as mm -hmm. far as that's concerned, like, eh, yeah, know. yeah. Um, let me see. Those things I know that feel I was the same way, nauseous and, and had preeclampsia. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. Um. Uh, Latrice said, "If I may ask, is there a reason Sean's name is not on the business since she is your partner?" Sean's um, name is on the it business. Is. Yeah, she's on the business. Um, I name is on the business. I think that. She's probably talking about Candy Sincerity Johnson, but that's because she's a business consultant. So when oh. people are working with Candy, they're not working with Candy and Sean, they're working with Candy. She's yeah. the one that's meeting with people, helping them start their businesses, walking them through the process, how to structure your business. She's the financial person. So she's the one teaching people how to mm -hmm. save, invest. You know, so I would like it's not me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But as far as Sincerity Johnson, I am. So <clears throat> This is a this is a good this is a this is a teaching lesson for some people. Y'all know I try to give you a little a little nugget too. So although I'm the coach, I'm the I'm the business consultant. If something were to happen to me and I die, or if something were to happen to me and I was incapacitated, I had gotten into a car accident or something like that. I have what's called intellectual property. Mm -hmm. The intellectual property is all of my digital books that's on my website is uh, moments of redemption. We get ro I get royalties from Amazon. I get direct sales from my website. I have two programs that are available on my website. Mm -hmm. You know, I have all of the stuff that I've created. So there's certain things that you can create one time and be paid for for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. I you know, when I wrote this book, it was a couple years ago, but we get royalty checks once a month from Amazon. So, and we never even mentioned it, right? So, if I'm not here, Sean gets all of that because the kids are underage. So, it's all about having the proper paperwork in place. Mm -hmm. Now, Sean's right. I'm the business coach. I'm the consultant. So, when somebody says, hey, you know, how can you help me with thus and so, you're working directly with me. Mm -hmm. But to have a proper business or and not just a hustle... You have to have the proper stuff in place so that should something happen, your family is still benefiting from the work that you did. Does that make sense? So, so yeah. So, Sean, I mean, everything is left, you know, to Sean and the kids. Um, LaVonda said, Candy, would you have another baby? I wish I could, but I had a hysterectomy. So, I had a hysterectomy on June 14th. June 14th of last year. Um, I remember because it was my mommy's birthday. Mm -hmm. So, I had a hysterectomy. Um, but... Um, there's obviously that's the reason why I can't, but also I still do. I get baby fever. Mm -hmm. I, I like out of everything that I've ever accomplished in my life. I'm not just saying this because the kids are upstairs, but, um, the thing that I'm most proud of is being a mom. Like I, I, they're everything for me. I would get out, man. I would trade everything for them. So if I could have another child, I would. Um, I wanted another kid. Sean didn't. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and, you know, after my very, very difficult pregnancy, the doctor pretty much said, if you were to have another child, your experience would be much the same, if not worse, mm -hmm. because then you're doing it and you're older. When I was pregnant with the twins, I was 30. Right now I'm 39. So even if I could have kids, it's a different thing because you got the age and, you know, all of that. Um, but yeah, so I, I physically can't, you mm -hmm. know, but I wish I wish I could because baby, I love babies. But the kids are at their age, at the age where it would be difficult for us mm -hmm. because they're, you know, the, the kids theoretically would be in two different, you know, yeah. um, it would be it, it would be, be tough. It would be, it would be tough. Uh, my Craig, thank you so much, so much for the stars. And she said, I'm a three-day follower and just love you guys already. Thank Aww, you so much. We, we love, love you too. more. Uh, Florine said, how will that work since you're not married with leaving your stuff? Um, as long as you have a will in place, you can leave your you can leave your stuff to whoever you want to. You don't have to be yeah. married to them. Yeah. I yeah. mean, it would make some stuff easier, but as long as you have a will that lays out your wishes, mm -hmm. then you can leave it to whoever. Because we're not married, but we also have split ownership with Sincerity Johnson. So for those of you guys who are new to us, we have uh, this company and then we also have a women's fashion brand. Mm -hmm. So Sincerity Johnson is our women's fashion brand. We sell handbags. We have jewelry, glasses, etc. Mm -hmm. Right. So if something happened to me, then Sean gets complete ownership of SJ. We call right. it SJ, Sincerity Johnson. Mm -hmm. So it's the same thing. It's all about making sure your attorneys have the proper documentation in place. Now, um, you know, as far as the house and stuff like that is concerned, um, you know, of course, like I said, all of that, Sean gets everything. She gets everything. Girl, that's no incentive for her to go knock me off or push me down these stairs or nothing, girl. But you see what I'm saying? Like, like we have everything set in place. Um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Gabby said, at least you have a boy and a girl. How cool is that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was like literally our prayers answered. Like literally. Wow. <laughs> so thank you for being here, Teresa. She said, um, how how old are your babies? I'm new. Today is my first time watching you guys are awesome. So the twins are nine. Mm -hmm. They turn so everybody in the house is a Scorpio but me. <laughs> Pray for me, okay? Um so they turned nine November nineteenth. Mm -hmm. So they just turned nine a couple of a couple of months ago. I'm gonna say weeks, but a couple of months ago they just turned nine. Mm -hmm. So they're nine. Uh, we homeschool our children. Yeah. So we live very busy lives. We um, we made that decision back during COVID, and we just continued with it because it works for our lifestyle. Um, so not only do we run the two businesses from home, we also homeschool our children. They are in third grade, but because we homeschool and they're progressing so quickly through third grade, theoretically, they'll be done with third grade around February-ish, uh, February, end of February, early March, they'll be done with third grade. Mm -hmm. And so we'll take, you know, probably a vacation, you know, some time off, and then they'll jump straight back into fourth grade. Mm -hmm. So, um, Yeah. Yeah. Um, Jackie said, were you, all, were you all cast out of the family because of your choice of relationship? I was not. I didn't have any issues with, um, with either side of my family. My family, it was very difficult. Um, my family, you know, it was very difficult. They never disowned me, but they made me feel very uncomfortable. It's an elephant. It's an elephant in the room that nobody talks about even still. Um, I remember it like it was very difficult for me to even bring somebody home. If it was just me, they were fine. If it was me and Sean, it was it was an issue. If it was me and my ex girlfriend, it was an issue. Um, and it was very very difficult up until the time Sean and I got married. And so when Sean and I got married, half of my family came and half of them didn't, and they didn't completely come all the way around to being 100% accepting of Sean until I was pregnant with the twins. And I don't know what that turning point was. It wasn't even that I sat them down and had a conversation with them, but because of the difficult time that they had with me, with accepting me being gay, um, it drove a wedge in, in, in our relationship in a lot of ways because you know, you got to remember when I left home, I had just graduated high school and I was going to college. Well, right after college, 
I had my own apartment, Sean had hers, and then we quickly got together and we moved in together. Then after we moved in together, we bought a house together. So all of that growing up, I became a woman outside of their house and they didn't witness that part. Mm -hmm. I would come home, you know, from college or even when we, because when we lived down in Bloomington after college, we started working for State Farm. We worked in corporate America. And so we were down there for 10 years and I literally left as a child at the age of 18. But by the time we bought this house and moved, you know, back up towards Chicago, I was a grown woman. Mm -hmm. I was in my mid twenties, you know, mm -hmm. like that's when I was opening my, you know, our state farm office. So I was at a different phase in life. Yeah. And so they saw me as still that, that young person. Mm -hmm. And so we clashed a lot, you know? And so they really just, you know, it took them a long time. And so I just put a lot of distance there. Um, over time, they came around, and now it's the craziest thing because Sean can go over there for hours mm -hmm. to my family house, and I not even be around. And girl, I they see me and they like, "Where's Sean?" You see what I'm saying? And it's like it's the craziest thing. So, so it's almost like if you didn't know, you would have never known. Mm -hmm. But nobody ever was adult enough to circle back around and apologize to her or me. Sean consistently even through all the bad treatment and stuff, um, showed up, you know, during that time, my grandfather was really sick and passing away and dying, you know, like she still, everything that she could do, she was there. She was there every step of the way. Um, and there was never an apology. Uh, you know, I'm sorry I treated you like this, nothing, but yeah, but some, but see, that's the danger. And this is where, you know, things get kind of tricky, but that's the danger when people are so, um, so uh, I'm not going to say brainwashed, but kind of when it comes to like religion, because you're bottled in to the point where you're willing to cut off ties or, or have a strained relationship with your family members. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know. But um, Anita said, did you ever separate after the divorce? Yes, we did. Mm -hmm. um, did you date other people then? Mm -hmm. She in this book. <laughs> she did. <laughs> Girl, she heavy. She heavy in this book. Girl. And then, girl, she, girl, we had one live together like once, once, maybe twice. I don't know, girl. Mm hmm. Um, and then when did you get back together? So we just recently got, to, got back together. I think it was, I was like, it was like mid. Maybe one recently. What I'm saying, like mid 2020, late 2020, like mm, maybe mid. Yeah, like mid 2020, mm -hmm. something like that. So it's been. A few years now. Um, oh, Sharice said that the kids have their have her dad's birthday. Um, Olivana was saying she follows another content creator who's having a difficult pregnancy. Mm. Um, how long have we do, been doing Facebook since 2017? Mm -hmm. Since 2017, yeah. Literally, I still believe that every single video we've ever done is still on here. <laughs> yeah, since mm -hmm. 2017. Um, how does someone contact you in regards to beginning a business? So you would just go to my website. You can send me an email through my website or go to my website and click the contact us button. And then just type out like basically all of what you're trying to do. And then, excuse me, it'll come straight to me or straight to both of us, actually, because Sean handles my inbox as well. Um, but it comes to us and then we will respond accordingly. Mm hmm. Um, Keisha said, I didn't see the beginning, so you may have answered this, but do you think you, uh, you all would ever get back together? We are back together. So we're currently dating or in a relationship. Uh, and she said, if not, would it be hard for you all to date each other people, to date other people living together? Absolutely. <laughs> I'm, girl. I could, I could not live here and try to formulate my thoughts to say that I was going to date somebody else. Well, why would you live here and be dating somebody else? That's what I'm saying, but absolutely not. But no. What you mean like? I don't, I don't know. Like, it, I, don't, I don't know why I would still live here. I don't know. But I'm just saying, no. that mm. No. Mm -mm. No, ma'am. Um, Let's see. Uh, Ivoya said, did you sell your state farm business? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. At the... So, at the very... And it was so... It, I'm not going to say it was crazy. I was about to say it was crazy. It was God. At the very beginning of, well, right before COVID, right before COVID. 
So COVID, everything shut down in March. The reason I remember is because it was right before my birthday. Mm -hmm. And Sean had plans for us for my birthday. And then everything hit. And then we had to restructure the plans. So I, we decided we were going to close the State Farm offices January of that year mm -hmm. and sell everything. So we did. And I told Sean, I said, you know, this is where we are. We were getting ready to go into the new year. And I think we made the decision October, November, mm -hmm. October, November. And so I was like, the first of the year, I don't want to do this no more. She was like, what? Mm -hmm. And so I told her, I said, and we talked about it on a different video. I said, we have worked our whole lives to get to this point. We're making high six figures. And by everybody else's standards, this looks like success. Mm -hmm. But is it really success if you got, you know, four or five hundred thousand dollars a year coming in one business, four or five hundred thousand dollars a year coming in another business, but you got all these team members you gotta pay. You got all this overhead. You got rent for the location. You got this big marketing budget. And by the time you get through taking care of all of that and all of the corporate stress and everything, you left with the same or less than you would if you was working back in corporate in the nine to five. In with my no stress. Shoe, I was working a corporate job at the time. So they just go yeah. to tell you. Like, so it's like, so we were, we were doing all of this. And I told Sean, I said, I just want to be free. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what that looks like. So we were looking at everything. We had savings. We had investments. And I told Sean, I said, I want to be free. I said, what would happen if we quit our jobs? I said, what? Sean was like, what are, you, what are you talking about? I said, what would happen if we quit our jobs? We quit our jobs. We didn't even have a full plan. Can I be transparent? I don't. Please don't do this. Please don't do this. <laughs> we quit our jobs. And we made the decision to leave. We knew we had enough money to be okay for a full year without no any additional income. So we left our jobs. Then, so January is when pretty much we were done. March, COVID hit. During that whole time between January and March, I had been praying very heavy. I had been manifesting. I kept saying, God, this is what I want. I've been on the road constantly back and forth between Chicago, Indianapolis, corporate events, et cetera. I'm never home. At the time, our kids were in school. Um, they were at the before school program. They were in school all day. They were in the after school program. Me and Sean weren't seeing each other a lot, but everybody's standards, we successful and we got this, this you know, beautiful life. But I'm like, it sucks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so... I just remember saying, God, here's what I want. I want to make a lot of money. I want to have freedom of my time. I want to be with my family 24 hours a day. And I want to go where I want to go when I want to go, go there. And I just want to build community and just be with people who I like to be with and people who like to be with me. Mm -hmm. I don't want to sit next to somebody in corporate America who I really don't like and don't have nothing in common with. And we got to pretend just because that's what makes sense. Right. I want to be around like-minded people and whatever that looked like is whatever it looked like. And I kept manifesting that. And so it was March that we were sitting with, no, no, no. It was February. Mm -hmm. We were sitting at the table during COVID and Sean was just on a sewing machine because she couldn't remember the beauty shops was closed. Everything was closed. So Sean was just getting her hair done all the time. She couldn't get her well, hair done. the following year. Oh yeah, that was a fun. So yeah, I didn't even leave my corporate job until that August. Oh yeah. So we were sitting at the table, and Sean was on the sewing machine, and she was making a hair wrap for herself. And she was like, "Oh man, when I go to the store, I need a mask, so I'm gonna get some material, and I'm gonna have a mask that matched my hair wrap." And she was like, "It's gonna be cute," and I've never done it before, but we stuck in the house anyway, so I'm gonna just get a sewing machine online, have it delivered, and see what I can make. She did it. Mm -hmm. We were live. This is why I tell y'all document everything because you never know what doors can open for you. We were live. People were like, oh, what you doing? And we told them. And then they was like, how can I order? We was like, Sean was like, order what? Like, order what? Girl, I grabbed that napkin and said, ask them how much. 
That's what the napkin said. Ask him how much. And so Sean was like, well, how much would you pay for it? And so people just started typing this amount, that amount, this amount, that amount, this amount, that amount. So I started writing the numbers down. I added it up, took the average and said, that's your price. Mm -hmm. And so people started inboxing and wanted to order. Sean was like, girl, we ain't got no website. We ain't got no merchant account. We ain't got no. I said, girl, hit that cash up. <laughs> Very much so cash. Long story short, that was the birth of Sincerity Johnson. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Now, we kept selling out, kept selling out, kept selling out. What we quickly realized was we traded one problem for the for another one because as all those orders came in, Sean was up to four or five o'clock in the morning on the sewing machine. And so I, I was like, okay, babe, we got a business. We need a different product. We need a product that's not going to require our blood, sweat, and tears, mm -hmm. right? People like us. They want to do business with us. What is it that women like? Mm -hmm. So that's how we came up with the handbags and the jewelry and all of that stuff. And so that was the birth of Sincerity Johnson. Mm -hmm. That first month at home, we did 5000 before a website, on cash out, like we would get out. It was bad. We was writing orders down in a notebook. By that second month, I said, okay, no, we got to build a business. Mm -hmm. This is not no hustle. So that's when I set everything up, you know, and we had a Shopify website. I said, we need to work on marketing. We really need to do this. Month two, 25,000. By month three, we were hitting 40,000 and growing. Mm -hmm. And so we documented every part of the process. And so, so many people started inboxing us because they were seeing our ads online. They were seeing our live videos over there on Sincerity Johnson and they were coming across us nonstop. Mm -hmm. And so, so many people was like, I want to start a business. Help me get going. And so I was like, I can teach you how to make a thousand dollars a day from home. Easy. Mm -hmm. Just tell me what product or service you want to make. And so then that's how the coaching started. Yeah. So people was like, word. And I'm like, yeah, I'll teach you everything. I'm like, I got a whole system. I put it in the book. Mm -hmm. I said, that's the e-commerce blueprint. Yeah. And so I was like, you can download that immediately. Like, I, I like it's a full playbook. Mm -hmm. Then I was like, I got a, a whole program that I teach you everything. And so that's the Mob Accelerator, yeah. the Millionaire Online Business Accelerator. Mm -hmm. And so that's how the coaching started. I didn't find it. It found me. But it was literally just asking God in the universe for what we wanted. And there were some moments where we were scared because you don't know. From month to month when you're a business owner, you don't know. But what I did know was I wanted to be with my family. And so for me in the beginning, it was, okay, God, like, yeah, to make money like, and to pay the bills is okay. But it's all in vain if I can never see the people that I'm working so hard for. Mm -hmm. So now, like like earlier when we were downstairs in the studio where, you know, all of, you know, everything that we showed, like for, for Sincerity Johnson, when we were down there, it was cool because when Sean asked me to go upstairs to get something, I came up here, I hung out with the kids for a few minutes, kissed them, loved on them. And it was right back downstairs, you know, and mm -hmm. I enjoy it. And we together all day. And because we homeschool the kids, they're, they, they're witnessing us build an empire. Mm -hmm. They see every aspect of that. Yeah. You know? So. Yeah. Uh, uh, Wanda said, Sean, when you moved in the apartment, did you date? No, I didn't date. When we separated and I was living outside of the home, I didn't date anybody. Mm -hmm. um, lovely lady said, are you a Pisces? So I'm on the I'm on the cusp, I guess you could say. My birthday is March 21st. So I'm I'm very, very Aries. I'm very Aries. Mm -hmm. I'm Aries to my core. Like every trait of an Aries is me, from what Sean said. <laughs> Latrice said, remember the young lady Candy was dating during the breakup and brought on live? What happened to her? We gave her a hard time. The best friend was not ready. Latrice, sit down, bro. Let me tell you. I was waiting to tell you, girl. Latrice. 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 Uh, who Latrice was referring to is uh, what's my name in the book? It's um, is it it's, Mia? It's Mia. It's Mia in the book. You know, I'm so mad at you that you named her Mia in the book. 
Mia. Damn it. <laughs> Latrina. Mia. So Mia and I have a very good mutual friend. Who was who was Jaleesa? Jaleesa. Look, you can't give a name to her. Okay, look, I'm just in real life. So Jaleesa's real name in real life is Jacinta. So my friend Jacinta is uh Mia's is Mia's sorority sister. Mm -hmm. So me and Jaleesa have been friends since college. All of us went to college together. Mia went to college with us. Mia's younger than Sean, so they didn't know each other but through me. But we all went to college together, right? Long story short, girl, me and Jaleesa still talk. Some kind of way, Mia's name came up during COVID. We started inboxing. Inbox turned into text message. Text message turned into phone calls. This was right before me and Sean got back together, right? So we on the phone. Things is getting hot and steamy again. Don't judge. Me and Sean went back together again. We back together. And we always, ever since we was off and on, just had this burning torch for each other. Well, girl, few conversations in. I'm talking about six, seven hour days on the phone, texting nonstop, like boom, boom, like nothing had happened in between. She tells me, I got something I got to tell you. Oh, okay. Well, what's up? I've been seeing somebody. What? So then she tells me, she like, yeah, she like, uh, he, he, <laughs> he, he, hell, he, girl, you know, he, he's this and he's that, blah, blah, blah. Long story short, girl, she downplayed it kind of at first and then like over time, more stuff fell out the bag. Long story short, Mia is pregnant right now. She's pregnant right now. She's due in March. Girl, that man hate me because... He kept telling her, stop talking to her. Stop talking to her. She couldn't cut me off. She, I kept telling her, work on your relationship. Because keep in mind, at the time, I'm single, girl. It's just me, girl. I kept telling her, no, you, you're in a whole relationship. Like, girl, go over there. Do that. And she's like, I can't stop thinking about you. Blah, blah, blah. So she kept reaching out, kept reaching out. Until she found out she was pregnant. Then I was like, girl, nah. Go over there. Get married. Y'all do something. Girl, go sit down. <laughs> and he was so intimidated my, by me because he knew that I was that one person that she was head over heels in love with. And the only reason why he even had a shot with her is because, you know, we, you know, whatever, right? So, girl, she do in March. I told Sean, because me and Sean talked about it when me and Sean got, got ready to get back together. And of course, we tell each other everything. I now, of course, she wasn't pregnant then. That was years ago. But I'm just saying. <laughs> no, 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 no. She pregnant now. Like, yeah, girl, is pregnant right now. Girl, I told Sean. I said, girl, I hope, I hope she bust and had that baby on March 21st. Girl, I hope every, I hope every time, girl, Liz, best friend. I hope every time he got to say his baby birthday, he remember. He remember, girl. With that, I, what, what Ray J say? Pregnant. What Ray J say? Best friend, I hit it first. You right, remember, she, buddy. I hit it first. And you remember, buddy. Look, the whole time she was texting me and was like, I can't stop thinking about what we used to If she had a baby on your birthday, I'm going to die. But we'll never know because you ain't talked to her since you found out, right? Girl, no. Nah. Me so. and you back together. I... No, no. no. Uh, I'm loyal. I'm not, I'm not like when y'all think of like, you know, the stuff that I spelled out in the book and that whole thing. I was a cheater years ago. At some point, you got to grow up. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. How I handled the communication issues that we had and what led me down that path was at the time, Sean and I were on bad terms. I wasn't getting what I needed in my relationship. And Mia and I were both in a very compromising place. 
she had been single for a very long time and I, you know, was not happy in my marriage. So because we were college friends and, you know, we were used to communicating, we went down a path that we had no business going down and neither of us intentionally did that. It wasn't like I was on a dating app, not to say that it's any better, but it wasn't like I was on a dating app or anything like that. Like this is somebody that had been in my life. The irony of it is because we have been friends since college, she was also at our wedding. Yeah, she was at our wedding. I have wedding pictures with her in it. When I threw my bouquet, she was in the group of women that was in there. She was at the baby shower. Was she the baby shower? No, I don't think she was at the baby shower. I thought she was. Mm -hmm. I think she just went to the wedding. Um, but yeah. <laughs> Because of all of the all of the overlap, like we had, we didn't intend on becoming all of that. And then I don't know if it's like part of the punishment, but I feel like, and she said the same thing. I don't know if it was like our karma. That's what it was. A part of our karma was, even though life took her in different directs, directions, she couldn't get over me, and I couldn't get over her. What made me get over her and close that chapter for good was finding out that she was pregnant. Because when I got off the, when, when we got ready to hang up, she was like, it was like a dead silence at the end of the conversation. And um, she was like, neither one of us want to hang up because we know this is it. Mm -hmm. I said, yeah, this is it. Like, that's, that's it. I'm done. Mm -hmm. Like, there's no, what do you, what else is it to say, girl? Like, I'm not, no. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Um, let me see. Judy said, "Did you say you live in Wilmington?" Or no, we don't. We live in Illinois. Uh, TSB said, "Hey, Max." Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, also said, "I need Candy to teach me." Hell, I'm tired of working hard for crumbs. Well, yeah. get out on her website, honey. CandySincerityJohnson.com. Yeah. Uh, Misha, no. Uh, you you probably came in late, so that's okay. But no. Um, Candy had a hysterectomy mm -hmm. last year, so. We're not able to have more babies. Mm -hmm. um, Erica said we was not ready. We was not nice. Y'all should have been nice to that girl. She's girl. A, she, despite it all, like she's a really, really dope person. Like still to this day, I say that. Like she's a dope person. Like, but I can understand why you guys gave her a hard time just because. Like it, it, she had a very unfair advantage. It was very unfair to her. Yeah. Like, now here's the thing, best friends. This is just between me, you, and the gate post. Well, people say that. <laughs> anyway, here's the thing about the whole situation. I feel like when you when you do something that's morally wrong, you do. You have karma that, that comes back. Now, I was a married woman and I had no business having an affair. I was dead wrong. There were so many nights that I couldn't get past what her and I shared. And I cried. Like we had, I had a soul tied to her. Mm -hmm. That was my, that was part of my karma. And I couldn't, I couldn't get rid of that. That was part of my karma. Now, what I fear is now she's about to be a mother mm -hmm. and she's probably going to be somebody's wife. Mm -hmm. Is that karma going to come back yes. on her in some capacity? Mm -hmm. Cause she did it to this woman. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? I, I don't know. I don't know. Right. Life is very funny, y'all. Um, S.A. Bradley said, hope I'm not being too personal, but I feel like we're best friends for real. Sight unseen. Did y'all use a sperm donor to conceive? Yes. We, we did. did. We did. We did um, IUI. So we did have a fertility doctor. We did IUI. Um, and we did use uh, a sperm bank. Mm -hmm. TSB said she ain't had that baby yet? No. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she ain't had that baby yet, girl. She doing March. She doing March. And, and, and in true transparency, we'll... we'll Unless somebody tells us, we'll never know because it's not like we're friends on social media or anything like that. So like, and we'll so so this is the this is the gag. I talked to Jaleesa, and y'all know, girl. The first thing I'll be wanting to be like, girl, is what's going on over there with me, girl? How me doing, girl? What's going on over there? But J because Jaleesa is kind of caught between both of us, she's real, real, real good friends with me, and real, real good friends with her soror, her sorority sister, because. One time, Jaleesa carried a bone back. We both kind of chewed Jaleesa out. And so Jaleesa was like, look, what y'all not going to do is put me in the, the middle of this forever torch that y'all got. 
<laughs> where you ask me little stuff on the side and she asked me little stuff. So she was like, D such and such is dead to you and such and such is dead to you. Don't ask me nothing. So it's like forbidden conversation. I could talk to Jaleesa about anything else. I cannot ask. And I'm so close to, you know, whatever. But girl, we got each other blocked. Well, I blocked her. I blocked her off of this page, off of all of my stuff, because she's not on social media. She got a real, real, real big corporate job. And she's like a VP or something like that, right? So she don't do a whole lot on social media. If she posts something, girl, it's like once every three, four months. It's not deep. And it's just a picture. She never go live. So I don't think it's fair for her to be able to peekaboo over here all the time. If she chose to. Girl, she used to all the time. Stop your lies. <laughs> I'm sure she stopped. <laughs> okay. I'm sure she stopped. Girl, I'm a good thing. Okay. <laughs> so she used to peekaboo over here all the time because she would say, I don't never see y'all stuff. But then that one video, girl, you see what I'm saying? Right. She used to do that. So I didn't think that it was fair. You get to watch me, but I can't watch you. Mm -hmm. You don't see. Okay. You ain't going to come over here and see. <laughs> uh, my Kai said, Sean, how do you feel about Candy wanting to tell this tea? Girl, we didn't tell her so many times. Like, Well, girl, look, best friend, one of y'all need to go over there and see what's going on over there. <laughs> We know she got a private page anyway. Don't mind me sitting Girl, y'all need to send a friend request and see what happens, girl. Uh, <laughs> oh, hey, Angela. She said, like, all the old time conversation. And, screen, yeah. and screenshot and report back to your best friends, girl. Make sure you say hi, Angela. Hi, Angela. Look, 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 look. About to scream my Girl, ear. hey, Angie. Angie, why you don't talk to me no more? Angie. Angie, you mad at me. Why you don't talk to me no more? Angie, that hurt. She's talked about this on more than one occasion. Like she's not being like she's being real in real life. Angie, that hard. Why you don't talk to me no more? That's my friend in real life, y'all. That's Angie. Everybody say hi to Angie. Wanda said, Candy, tell them about the older man. What older man? I gotta tell the right story. What older man? <laughs> what? Cause, girl, you know every story, girl. But I'm saying, like, you see what I'm saying? What if I start telling the story and it wasn't that? <laughs> It wasn't that story, girl. When did I start telling the story? Oh, my. <laughs> what, oh, uh, what story? I don't know. Girl, what wanted to tell you. She said, I'm confused. This relationship you had was while you were married. I thought you didn't cheat. No, we both said we didn't oh, cheat. Oh, we both. Girl, yeah. Girl, I cheat. Yeah. Listen. Listen, best friend. And I'm not bragging. Yeah. This ain't funny, but I'm just being transparent. I didn't cheat. Girl, I cheated, 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 cheated. You see what I'm saying? Like, because she is like... Oh, Bob is my coworker, and we had this one encounter. No, girl, I was in a whole relationship. Like that's yeah. I I I, I certainly I cheated. I, I I'm not proud of it, but yeah, I was in a I was in two whole relationships. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Two whole relationships. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. let's, Angela said you're too busy. Girl, I work from home. I'm not too busy. Uh, you're welcome, Essie. He said, thank you for being so candid and open. No problem. That's it. Mm -hmm. We answered all of the questions. Yeah. Yeah. It's after midnight, girl. Oh, Sean sleepy. Girl, look, listen. Listen, best friends. Let me tell you something. Sean sleepy. Let me tell you how I have never, ever since I was a small child, okay? Mm -hmm. I've never fought sleep. Wanda, I don't remember what story I told you. You got to give me some more details. <laughs> You gotta give me some more details in there, girl. You can't be like, girl, you the one you talk, girl. I tell stories every day. Girl. I think I know what Rhonda's talking about, but I don't want to misspeak. Which one? So, did you ever tell the story about this one here? Of course, you didn't say that name. <laughs> I think I did, here? girl. I think I did, girl. <laughs> Cause that's the only older man I can think of. I don't know. It ain't no other one. I don't know. Um, Tracy said you missed my question. What was your Tracy? Trust, trust, question. What was your question, Tracy? Because I tried to make sure that I, uh, I, I hit them all. Oh, love you more, Anita. Uh, Anita, it's okay. Just explain. This is a no judgment. Oh, okay. Oh no, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine, Anita. But yeah. So. Mm -hmm. But that's that's it. So. We wanted to make sure, like I said, best friends, this is the type of stuff that we used to do 
night after night after night, mm -hmm. week after week. We talk about current, you know, current topics, trending topics at the same time, and then talk about it some more. So for the people that's like, why are you all up in up with the people's business and you said, uh uh. We we first talked about our business, mm -hmm. but but you can only talk about your business for so long because ain't nothing else happening. We want to sit here and talk yeah. about how we worked all day today. Like and let me be let me be let me be honest. So this is this is what um this is what I sat with for a long time. I sat with and I had a conversation with Sean and I had a conversation with my best friend. And I said, when it comes to me, I'm multidimensional. And people who've been around for around us online, they know. I'm the person who can inspire you. Excuse me. I'm the person who could tell you something that's gonna have you busting up laughing. I'm the person who could teach you mm -hmm. and all of that stuff, right? But when I look at like what's gonna move the needle the furthest, if I was to die, and I know everybody's like, girl, don't do that. <laughs> but if I was to die for real, what do I wanna be known for? And what's going to help you the most, mm -hmm. right? After you laugh, after I entertain you, if you still got to go back to them same problems, am I really serving you to the best of my capacity? Or can we leverage some of my life experiences, some of all of the things that I've been taught, all of the things that I've learned, you know, all of this to help you move the needle to improve your quality of life, mm -hmm. make more money, all of this, then that's that's what it is and so i found that that's really my calling so we kind of do a little bit of it all but at the core it's really the financial piece over mm -hmm. here it's the financial tracy piece. i feel like your comment must be pam's i love these sessions oh i feel like your question or something is being filtered out because i swear i don't see a question from you but then i see you said i had a hard time accepting her choice because of religion so was there a question before that, Tracy? Because I'm not seeing a question. And then Gwen said, Sean, are you not jealous? No, I'm not. Like, we, if you got the book, you know why. You would know why. <laughs> Sean can't be jealous. There's no if way. You got the book, if you got the book, you know why, girl. It, 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 it got not jealous at all. It, it got um, crazy. Um, let me see. Do, 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 do. Yes, I grabbed the book. Yeah, if anybody else sees Tracy's question, let me know. Because, like, honestly, Tracy, I see you said yes. I see you said I had a hard time accepting her choice because of religion. And then before that, you said you missed my question. Outside of that, I don't see anything else. And I made sure to make sure we hit all questions. Mm -hmm. And does anybody else have any questions? Before I go in here, make me a peanut butter and jelly sandwich and shower and go to bed. Not a PB and J. Because I'm hungry. But I'm kind of mm -hmm. hungry, so... But you said you you said you got some fruit from the um yeah. grocery store. Some what'd you yes. get? Some grapes. Yes. Um. So Sherry, the audio we don't we never did an audio book. Mm -hmm. I tried to. I literally recorded Candy's entire book. Tried to submit it so it could be in, on Audible, and they didn't accept it. And I was not going to do it again. Yeah. They said something about the sound quality. Yeah. And we were like, yeah, you're lying. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I'm not, I'm yeah, not, you're lying. I'm not still gonna sit here and read this entire book again. I'm not doing it. Uh okay, a lot of people are saying I don't see the question. So yeah, I don't know. I don't know what happened, Miss Tracy, but mm -hmm. I don't know if we'll ever do something like this again because we've moved away from this type of stuff. I mean, mm -hmm. we we sprinkle some stuff in there from time to time, but Linda Burr said, where can I get the book? So you're gonna go, so you're gonna want to go to Candy Sincerity Johnson. Mm -hmm. Go to CandySincerityJohnson.com. The title of the book is called Moments of Redemption. Mm -hmm. Moments of Redemption. And yes, that's me on the cover. Mm -hmm. I know it's crazy, right? So the title of the book is called Moments of Redemption. Order the book on the website. I'll autograph it. We'll put it in the mail and you'll get it probably before the end of next week. Mm-hmm. Yep, I'm gonna go to um candysincerityjohnson.com. And it's a whole book I wrote about my whole life. Mm -hmm. Um, let me see. My credit says since I'm new, pardon if my question isn't appropriate, but is Sean able to have kids? No, it's not inappropriate. So no, I tried. I tried before Candy and I got together. I tried when we got together. I was never successful to been able to uh carry a child. I've never been pregnant before. And so I had a hysterectomy. It was not, it was for some other issues that I was having, but until no, I can't have children either. Mm -hmm. I can't have children. So 
Thank you, TSB. She said the book is so good, girl. It's worth it. Teresa said, clever cover. Isn't it? Thank you. So, yeah, and I told you guys earlier, I don't know if you just popped on, but I told you guys both pictures are me. Sean's cousin did the cover. He did an amazing job. So, um, it just represents the masculine version of me versus the feminine version of me. Girl, I put that wig on my head. That wig is atrocious in real life. But anyway, so I'm just I, accepting both sides. Yeah, myself. just accepting both sides of myself, girl. But just this thing right here, <laughs> that thing right there. Um, Evoya said, how do the children explain to moms? That's all they know. Mm -hmm. That's all they know. Mm -hmm. um, we've had very honest conversations about, with them about how families look different and, you know, things like that. And so they, it's, that's, that's, that's their family. Ooh, Quay said she just finished the book for the second time. Oh, wow. Yes. Wow, wow, wow. It's the hot and steamy, uh, it's the hot and steamy, uh, no. scene. Um, mm. Oh, hi, Aisha. She said, I love following you guys from the UK. Thank you. Uh, Sherry said, I Clay, I got both books when they first came out, but when you read chapter one. Oh, yes. when you read chapter one. Yeah. I, I read excerpts from both of the books. Candy mm. wanted me to read her book, but she said, like, you, you read better. You read it. And yeah. I was like, where's your book? You know you read it. Yeah. So, but I'm glad you guys enjoyed this live. Oh, yeah. I'm glad that you guys enjoyed this live. Um, so for those who were saying what they had to say, hopefully this clears the air a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, we love you guys. I'm gonna let Candy close us out like she always does. Uh, what's the title of your book? The title of my book is called Voyeurism. I do not currently have any books on hand. I haven't any, I haven't ordered any in a, in a while. Once I sold out of them, I just never replenished. Mm -hmm. Um, like Candy said, mine is on is available on Amazon as well, but it's called Voyeurism. Um, and I really haven't had um, the demand, if you know anything about supply and demand. I was just teaching the kids about that today in school. But I haven't really had the demand for me to order more. So that's the reason why I haven't ordered anymore. But CeCe Carter said, Sean is ready to go. Sean's sleepy. That's it. That's it. <laughs> Sean is sleepy. So she literally going to eat her peanut butter and jelly sandwich. She's going to go upstairs and shower. And when Sean gets sleepy, she ain't going to say a whole lot. She's going to call up. In a ball and be in the bed, and girl, Sean ain't gonna be no more good till tomorrow morning. When I gotta get up and yes. take a little man to uh, baseball practice. Yeah, <laughs> Alicia said we got smoke. Who got smoke, boo? Who got smoke? Yes, yeah. But so we wanted this video. We gonna we are gonna end it, but we wanted this video to be a for real video for all of our new best friends mm -hmm. for you to see who we are. Yeah, and see. How we get to the point where we've learned so many of the lessons that we've learned. Mm -hmm. We've matured and grown up a lot in front of you guys. Um, there's been a lot of bumps and bruises, twists and turns. And so when you guys see us giving feedback and coaching and crit now I'm not going to say criticism, but you know, whatever. Correction. Correction to other people mm -hmm. is based on all of the dumb choices that we made that led us here. Mm -hmm. And so this video was really to show our imperfections. Yep. To give you guys a glimpse into who we are um, and all of that, how we got here, what our journey looked like. Yeah. yeah. Well, we enjoyed you. We love you guys. Yeah. You got anything else, Bob? Um, I can't think of anything else. But definitely check out Candy's website for those that are looking for business stuff. Mm -hmm. Check it out. For those who are looking for a little bit of more tea, check it out. <laughs> okay. This is, look, this is all the tea you need. All the Can tea I be you need. honest? Moments of Redemption is all the TV you need. That's all you need. Yes. But well, we love you guys. Have an amazing day. Make sure your notifications are on. Mm -hmm. If you're not liking and following the page, you're doing yourself a disservice. But as we always say, the absolute best is yet to come. But baby, we got relaxing to do. <laughs> good night, Have a good night. Time.